Hey, Red Cliff is done. Mm. I'm gonna do is focus on companions again. Put your back into it. Do you think you'll swing in a broom? Uh, the, the thing is, we haven't really talked to Shale, for example, at all. Uh, after the Ebro's events, we haven't talked to Algrim at all after murdering his wife. And a lot of other options might be available too now. As you said, Blood Hat, at least the time here, has moved forward a few times already. So, we also need to do some leveling up anyway, so. I doubt we can do much else during here this. Yeah, we. I'm going to take Champion Specialization. Champion is a veteran warrior and a confident leader in battle. Processing skill at ar possessing skill at arms, impressive enough to inspire allies. Champion can also intimidate and demoralize foes. These are the heroes you find commanding an army or plunging headlong into danger, somehow making it look easy. I'm putting the attribute bots later. I want to see what the situation is after making the rest of the choices. Oh, five talent points. Champion. War Cry. Fairly cheap, not too long of a cooldown. Champion lets out a fearsome cry that gives nearby enemies a penalty to attack. With superiority, nearby enemies are also knocked down unless they pass physical resistance. Uh, crowd control. Rally. Sustain. Champion's presence inspires nearby allies, giving them bonuses to attack and defense while this mode is active. And coupled with motive, motive, the attack bonus increases. Motive. Champion inspires allies to attack with renewed vigor. The rally talent now increases attack in addition to its defense bonus. Superiority passive. The champion is so fearsome that War Cry now knocks nearby opponents off their feet unless they pass a physical resistance check. I don't really care about the Berserker final blow. Because we have a lot of use for stamina constantly. We're not gonna waste it on a single swing. It's just not a good use of our stamina. We need to decide what else to go after though. I guess I'll take the whirlwind just to finish up the dual weapon fighting stuff. We'll have to take a warrior abilities after this. I'm not sure what to go after. I haven't looked the warrior abilities too closely. Forward. Character flies into a whirlwind dance of death, striking out at surrounding enemies with both weapons. Each hit deals normal combat damage. Yep. Dual weapon mass. Uh, elite. I have no idea what this means. Don't really care. Attribute points. There's a lot of abilities now with us, and even sustained states. Rally and Berserk, something we'll keep up constantly. Momentum, pro momentum, probably not.
Uh, at least not in a situation where we miss with us. Okay. Sell of any activate mode rally. Now is better than later. Okay. We've seen Dark Spawn use this constantly. At least a leaders. Attack and defense bonuses for all. Do we get the bonuses too? I guess so. Defense 89. Anyway. Attributes. Um. I'd like more willpower. That's stamina for combat techniques and special attacks. It won't provide a huge boost, but I certainly want a few points. I do need more strength to gain access to the best equipment possible. And I am a damage based warrior, so without strength, I'm nothing. Willpower 20, Constitution 80. Strength 46. That sounds about right. Anyway. It's time to chat. Shale. Shale of House Kadash. Is that who I once was? I find this difficult to believe. You think the name's a coincidence? No. Are you doubting Carradin now? No, I do not doubt him. I simply cannot remember. If I was this shale of House Kadash as Carradin said, there must be some evidence of my existence remaining. I must find it. You think something will trigger your memory? I need to know that this is the truth and not simply believe. What Carradin said, it has allowed me to remember one thing. I believe I know where Kadash Taig is. Mm. We can go there if you like. Its offer is appreciated. I will mark the location on its map. If we can journey there soon, I am most curious as to what we will find. Okay, so shales. Uh, I think most of the companions have a quest. That's Liliana. Uh, that might be in the preview. Yeah, it's part of the premium content. We have Liliana and Morrigan. We don't have a lot of the others. Ogren. Worry about killing your wife. There you are. Wanted to talk to you. Go ahead. Aye, right, here we go. You and I, we've... You know how sometimes you spend time with people and things. Hmm. I love you too, Ogren. <laughs> ah. Okay, take your time. What is it? I was thinking... Uh, I do know some people out here on the surface. A person, actually. A girl I knew in Orzammar. Before I left, obviously. A girl you knew, or a girl you knew? 
What? Oh, you mean were we rutting? <laughs> oh, I. After Bronca left for the deep roads, name's Felsey. She was a fiery one. I'm sure she's forgiven me by now. Thought maybe I'd track her down, see how she's been living. Uh, what's she doing on the surface? What? Why are you asking me? I didn't do anything. I tried to look her up the last time we were at Lake Kalanhod. She wasn't at work at the inn. At home with her sick mother, they said. I figured it was just the ancestors telling me something. But I keep thinking about her. Yeah, we can go back. Well, and a good friend you are, Warden. I'll think about you if we ever... Uh, no, actually, that would be gross. No, uh, what was it you wanted to say? Okay. Can you teach me to fight like you do? You want to be a berserker? <laughs> Thought I'd never see the day. I, I'll teach you. Just be ready. To be a berserker, you have to face your own inner rage. Let the spirit of battle take over. And all that dust. There's a whole pile of philosophical rot that goes behind it. But the bedrock is this. Get real mad and kill things. Hey, teach me. I can teach you what gets my hackles in a twist. But no one can tell you what'll set off that killing rage in you. Finding that is the key to berserking. And once you got that, <laughs> I tell you, the ladies love it when you're all mysteriously angry for no reason. Trust me. You're a quick study, Warden. You must have been seriously steamed up about something for a long time. Mm. Tell me more about Berserkers. What the sod is there to know? You get mad, you fly into battle, and things die. It's pretty simple. The hard part is getting in touch with your rage. We all learn to hold that back. It's why we don't kill every duster who looks at us sideways. You need to shut that off. For some people, being in battle is enough. But others have to think about something. Violence, monsters, nobles, your wife. Whatever. Your wife? <laughs> I, especially my wife. Mm. So, just thinking about it works. Well, for most berserkers it does. Several years ago I worked with a berserker on one expedition who just couldn't work himself up. We had to kick him in the stones before he could get going. Why would you want to fight that way? Why not? When you fight, you get mad. By the stone, it's a sodding tactic to enrage your enemy so he makes a mistake, right? Berserkers grab that anger and drink it like it's yesterday's ale. Then we turn it against our foes and watch the limbs fly. I'm listening. Okay. I'd like to know more about you. What about? Are you sure you're fine with what happened with Branca? Oh, sure. I'm fine with it. I mean, she was a real firebrand between the sheets. But a bit soft in the skull, you know what I mean? Explains why she left, anyway. Why would she leave a prize for like yourself? Woman was a few columns short of a hall, you know? I mean, she leaves me and flits about with that watered tart Hespeth. What she got that I don't? Just the thought of the two of them together, kissing and licking and... intertwined on the floor of the deep roads. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna go back to the tent for a moment. Uh, excuse me. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, Wolverine. Come to talk to old Ogren, have you? Don't know why. Hey, what's wrong? Nothing. 
I'm fine. Just, uh, I got a hornet in my eye is all. Did you want to talk about something? Mm. I'd like to know more about you. What about? Uh, how do you like the surface? It's sodding great. At first I was a little queasy with all that air, but there's just so much of it. No one has any idea who you are or what you're doing. And the ale? Oh, who'd have thought ale made with grain? <laughs> Aye, the surface is great. It's like a big, bright world of filth without a ceiling. My kind of place. Hey, let's go find something to kill, huh? All this talk makes my hands twitchy. Pull up a drink, Warden. Join me in my sodding hole. Mm, something bothering you. Nah, uh, just tired is all. Did you want to talk about something? Yeah, he seems to be co uh, continuously angry about something for no reason. I guess that's the Berserker thing. What about? Uh, do you miss Orzammar? What? Miss Orzammar? Are you mad in addition to being ugly? <laughs> They treated me like a puddle fly back there. I'm never going back. All right. Aye. All right then. You saw it. Tell that thing to give it back. Uh. What are you talking about? That dog. Mangy mongrel. Sodding thing took my pants. But I'll show him. Yeah, I don't need my pants anyway. Okay. Yes, you do. You need your pants. Logan, you're wearing your pants. But the dog doesn't know that. And it will be his sodding downfall. You hear that, Nug Humper? I'm coming for you! Prepare to die! Uh. You there! I, you... <laughs> I've been watching you... Where can I get some sauce for that rump roast? <laughs> <laughs> What? That's right. You've wiped your foot on the Ogren doormat of love. <laughs> Go and make yourself ready, woman. I'll be right there to see to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is he going to pass out constantly? Well, I was sort of expecting this. Hey, Warden, you gotta hear this one. This human walks into a tavern, and there's an elf there, and she says... <laughs> and she says... <laughs> okay, spit it out. Oh yeah, I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can get anything out of him now. Uh, do I do I have to leave the camp or something? <laughs> Ass chaps. <laughs> okay. Um well, we have a mission for Ogre now, don't we? Old Flame. What's then? You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is... unexpected. Hmm. Thanks, I guess. 
You're welcome. Why did you come to Ferelden? I was sent to be the eyes of the Antom. The Arishok asked what is the Blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. What's an Arishok? The one who commands the Antam, the body of the Kunari. Uh, so, is that your king? Kunari have no kings. Hmm, what have you then? Little patience for endless questions. Did you find the answer to this question? A portion of it. Uh, what's the answer? Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Hmm. Hmm. Don't you have to report that then? Yes. When are you going to do that? Never. I cannot go home. Why not? It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Okay. Uh, what were you doing in that cage? Does it matter? Very well. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. So you put yourself in that cage. I know that my failures were my own. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. I came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. Hmm. What happened to the other Kunari? I am told no others survived. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. What did you do? I searched for it, and when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. Did the farmers know where it was? They said they found me with nothing. Hmm. Did you believe them? I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. Hmm. That is terrible. I know I cannot justify what I have done. My honor is forfeit. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter unarmed and alone to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antam. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. Couldn't you search for the blade? If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. So, where did you fight the Darkspawn? Near Lake Callanhad. Don't worry, we'll find it. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. Hmm, so... Stan's quest, at least partially. Why are we stopping? Hmm. Yeah, we're working together. I think we should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? You're right. You were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. Mm. You said you were in the army. I am.
Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, dwarf. So you must know your way around the battlefield, then. Some of them. They aren't all alike. Uh, I'd like to say, are you always this bad about answering questions? But he's not bad at answering questions, really. He's answering exactly what I'm asking. So, uh, I think I'd have to be more precise. Because uh, otherwise he's not going to get what I'm going after with the questions. If I don't directly ask it. Uh, I've never seen a Kunari before. Tell me about your people. No. Mm, why not? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy eared people who excel at poverty. Hmm. Never mind then, let's keep moving. As you wish. You called. I want to discuss something you mentioned. Speak then. Then I suggest we move on. Questions, questions. I am hardly surprised. You find Ferelden strange. To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Our farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. Is there anything you like about Ferelden? There is... interesting food here. You have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things, like bread, but sweet and crumbly. Cookies? Yes. We have no such things in our lands. <laughs> this should be remedied. Hmm. I'll keep that in mind. Shall we move on? Uh, you, uh, you sound a bit homesick. Perhaps. It's strange to be in a crowd and hear a language that is not your own. To see faces that are and aren't like yours. I miss the smells of Saharon. Tea and incense and the sea. Ferelden smells of wet dogs. You left off running carpet, garbage. True. I was trying to forget that part. Shall we move on? Sure. Okay, don't the Kunari ever want to change their lot in life? Uh, I can guess... Uh, I guess it would be pretty much the same as with Win. That it's... It's an orderly society where everyone knows their place by birth. There's no need to worry about things uh, and fret about what you're gonna do, what you're gonna become. It's all known to you right from the start, and you can focus on that and find your happiness within that. Every, everything's done by, I get, I guess it's in that way very predetermined and ritualistic. Might as well ask though. Don't the Kunari ever want to change their lot in life? What does that accomplish? The farmer who buys a shop is never a merchant. He is always a farmer turned merchant. He carries his old life with him as a turtle carries its shell. Hmm. Hmm. Might be happier. Happiness is fragile. Nothing can be built upon it that will last. Only duty endures. You don't think happiness is important? You can learn to find it in doing your duty, in serving your people. 
There is no need to search for it. Shall we move on? Okay. As you wish. Where the plus 15 came from? I don't know, 62, that's quite good. Uh, I, I see thin society would be very... very odd by today's standards. But it's... In in sort of in sort of way, I, I see the comfort. You know the path. You know your path. You know. You can do things within that, but it's very predictable, very orderly. And since you've basically been on that path. Since you've been born, I, I don't think it would be too much of a problem. Now you sort of don't have any kind of a path, and it goes to a pretty long into your life before you're asked to make that choice on your own, and no one really gives you any kind of direction. You might not even know yourself what you want to do, and a lot of people just end up doing something. Uh, this would be basically knowing right from when you're born what the path from different stages of your life was going to be. You have your group, you have everything is... You don't have to really worry about something. You have to just dedicate yourself to that one path, one sort of area. So there's, there's some com comfort in that certainty. It depends on how wide those areas are. For example, a warrior leaves a quite a lot of uh, variation in what type of warrior you are, are going to be, what sort of a position you might have in an army and so, so like that. It's not like it's totally determined by to the finest of details. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with what we have with Sten now, since we got his quest, and he is fairly high approval with him. Okay, let's find... We need to go and kill Flemeth. If she's a dragon, it should be similar to the high dragon we just killed. So bows were quite nice, but... At least one person has to take him in melee and has to move around him, avoid the frontal attacks. Uh, have a new emissary. On your order, Grey Warden. Do you need anything? Uh, the R was generous, but rushed. Certain areas could see improvement. We're a mercenary force, Warden. Much of our equipment is self-financed. Were you to commit additional funds, we'd upgrade as we saw the need. Donate money, is that it? Yeah. Well, that's the easiest part. We can generate money out of the thing there. Mm. What does Alice here want? What's your quest? You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon, and when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. 
you have a friend outside of the Great Wardens? I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Grey Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. Hmm. Have you contacted her? No. I thought about writing her, but I never did. And then we were called down to Ostagar and I never got the chance. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, what are you expecting she will do? I'm not sure. I don't know anything about her except her name and where she lives. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. So, Alistair's family. We saw a glimpse of that, I think. Did we? Whose quest do we have now? Lillianna, Morgan, Ogren, Sen, Alistair. Win. What do we do? Need to do for you? What's on your mind? Is there something we can do to cure you? Cure me? What? Am I sick now? Mm. In a sense, you're a little dead. Even you know that you cannot cure the dead. And I'm not the only one dying. You are too. <laughs> I'm just more efficient about it. Ah, child. Your concern is heartwarming. But death comes to everyone. And it is not something to fear. I'd rather be alive, really. People fear not death, but having life taken from them. Many waste the life given to them, occupying themselves with things that do not matter. When the end comes, they say they did not have time enough to spend with loved ones, to fulfill dreams, to go on adventures they only talked about. But why should you fear death if you are happy with the life you have led? If you can look back on everything and say, Yes, I am content. It is enough. Are you content? I think I've led a good life. A full life. And I, for one, am not afraid of death. Whatever it may bring. They say that when you die, your spirit travels through the Fade and returns to the Maker. And after that, we'll see, won't we? What's on your mind? Mm. Do you have any regrets? I try not to dwell too much on the mistakes of my past, of which there are many. I would go quite mad if I did that. But I do have one regret. The greatest misstep of my life. Made even more grave because it had dire consequences for someone else. Hey, tell me. Years ago, I was assigned as mentor to a lad, Anaren. He was my first apprentice. Anaren was an elf, raised in one of the elven alienages, and he was very mistrustful of humans, especially humans in authority. I can see how this could be trouble. What Anaren needed was time. Time to get used to his new home, time to emerge from his shell so we could build a rapport. I gave him no such time. I was young and arrogant. He is a mage, I thought. 
He needs to grow up and act like one. I expected too much from him, too quickly. I gave no consideration to his origin or his feelings, and he retreated further from me. All I could think of was how stubborn he was, how he was throwing away all his talent and his potential, just to be difficult. That just seems so unlike you. Oh, age and wisdom have mellowed me. I was quite different back then. Much more unforgiving. You cannot plant crops in the cold, wintry ground. You cannot teach a student who is closed off and unresponsive. Patience is what is needed, and I learned that too late to help him. So, what happened to him? Aneran ran away from the circle one night. I had berated him over some trivial, ridiculous matter that I no longer remember. I drove him away because of something utterly unimportant. He was a child, fourteen at the time of his leaving. They had his phylactery, and they hunted him down. Why didn't they just bring him back to the tower? They called him Maleficar, a mage who practices forbidden magic, deserving of death. He was a child, misunderstood and lost. I begged the Templars to tell me if he suffered, if they gave him a quick death. I got no answers from them. I was his mentor, and they wouldn't even tell me what became of him. Yeah, that, it's not your fault, Wynne. I should have known better. I had the best mentors. They were kind, compassionate. Why didn't I learn from them? I failed in Aaron. All I had to do was listen to him. He would try to talk to me, and I would tell him to concentrate on his spells. He talked about the alienage sometimes, and the Dalish. He always talked about looking for the Dalish elves. Maybe he did fight the Dalish. The Templars are well trained and thorough. That he still lives, it would be a vain hope. The apprentices that came after Aneran benefited greatly from the lessons I learned from him. In a sense, he was my teacher, and I his student. I see. So, there is a bright side. And there it is. My story. My one greatest regret. Yay, wins regret. Ah, are we missing anything? Well, there's the dog's quest, I suppose. Oh, why you little? What? Are you harassing my dog? Me harassing your dog? I should say it's the other way round. Your furry friend here took offence at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Why are you getting near his food? Yeah, there's hardly any blood drawn, still, he shouldn't have... Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. I'd never feed you another human being. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. Uh, look at what your fool dog placed in my pack. A putrid, half-eaten hair is not something a woman wants to find in her unmentionables. 
Mm, okay. I can say things I should not definitely be saying. Hmm. I think he thinks you need more meat on your bones. He's a little bit skinny. I think I have enough meat where it counts, and I certainly don't need it in my pack. The dirty mongrel can have this back. There. And tell him not to do it again. Yeah. Don't do it again, your war dog, not a nurse maid. I wonder how many of these are. Uh, actually, uh, I don't give a crap about the dog. Uh, he might have a quest, but Zebra certainly is a higher priority. I've a question, if I may. Go ahead. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. <laughs> is this after I ravish you in celebration? Yeah. Uh, why would I do anything with you? Oh, I imply nothing specific, of course. One simply assumes that once your Grey Warden business is finished, you would have no need of an assassin to follow you about. Am I wrong? Hmm. Yeah, there's def definitely a flirt or romance options with him. I think he goes both ways. Hmm, Liliana is probably another one who does that. It doesn't really matter. Your gender is indifferent to these people. Okay, I will. I'll, I won't hold you to any oath, Lee. Whenever you like. Oh, I made the oath willingly. But if that's how you see it, then all the better. For the moment, it's still best I stay, considering my standing with the crows. But let's assume that I didn't desire to leave when the time came. What then? Yep. Oh, uh, I could always use a friend. Indeed. Hmm. I might even be glad to call myself such, come to think of it. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? Is everyone approves for some reason? Because I wasn't a total dick toward him, or I didn't yet try to abuse him. Maybe. What say you? Hmm. Okay, I want to discuss something personal, but uh, not really. Some questions. By all means. Tell me a little about Antiva. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Hmm. Don't you want to go back? It's not really a matter of wanting to go back. I cannot go. At least not yet. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? Hmm. I'm from Orzammar. Ah, yes. The city of lava and stone. It too is beautiful, in its way. Sad that it will never see sunlight or smell the salt of the ocean, however. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. Is that some kind of euphemism? Okay. Tell me about your leather fetish. I mean the smell. 
For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. You sound like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? Now uh, your home is still there, Zevron. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a handsome Grey Warden? A man who then spares my life? I could not. You need to make the most of where you are. Quite right you are. I see the Grey Wardens do not recruit fools. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Mm. What say you? By all means. Okay. What? What does it take to become an assassin? Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training, the sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. Does it stay, doesn't it doesn't take any special skill then? I don't know about that. It's simply a slightly different skill set from your average killer as I see it. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe either by poison or by crippling their limbs makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. Hmm. That sounds like it could be useful. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? What say you? Can you teach others to be an assassin? Hmm, I could teach others, but not yourself. First, I would need someone who has training as a rogue. That is, unless you would care to spend the years it takes to gain the fundamentals. But, if there should be such a person who desires this training, yes, by all means, send them to me. The crows are already furious, no? I shall enjoy tweaking their nose further. Yeah, assassin number. Mm, I'm not really interested in assassin though. Valiana could benefit from something though. But dueling might be more appropriate. What say you? By all means. Why did you want to leave the crows exactly? Well now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? Mm, well, then what would you rather do? No, you didn't choose to join the crows. Mm, to be truthful, I didn't even know the crows existed when I joined them. 
I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased. For three sovereigns, I'm told. Which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way. Buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder. And if you do poorly in your training, you die. And that system works? Of course. You compete against your fellow assassins, and those who survive are rightfully proud of it. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. Gets you women. And men. Or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. So what is it you fancy exactly? I fancy many things. I fancy things that are beautiful and things that are strong. I fancy things that are dangerous and exciting. Would you be offended if I said I fancied you? No, but you needn't. No, not offended, but you needn't bother. Ah, that's too bad. I do so enjoy it when I get to be flirty. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. Hmm. Once the crows eventually find you, <laughs> Eventually can be a very, very long time if one plays one's cards right. Come now, enough chit chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. What say you? Hey, questions, By questions. All means. Do you actually enjoy being an assassin? And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? Hmm. Mm, no, you're probably right. I often find myself the instrument of fate, ending these lives for one necessity or another. I console myself with the notion that most of them had it coming. As far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed, the pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. I do enjoy violence myself. <laughs> you enjoy getting the blood flowing, whether it is yours or others? Yes, I know the type. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. Having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules, oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Hmm. Uh, don't you have any other skills? None that I wouldn't get into trouble for performing publicly. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. Hmm. What say you? By all means. Tell me about your adventures. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? You certainly talk like you've had adventures. Falling down a flight of stairs is an adventure. Falling into someone's bed, also an adventure. I am assuming what you're looking for are professional anecdotes. Let's see, my second mission ever for the Crows was a bit intriguing. 
I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. Meddling in politics how? How should I know? I got the impression it involved sex, but then I get that impression about most everything. Odd, really. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs, as I recall. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. And she didn't try to kill you? Well, yes, twice, actually. Then she decided to try and use me instead. The woman had actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiva City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. So you didn't actually kill her? No, were you upset about that? At first, yes. Well, not upset. Surprised is really a better word. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The circle of magi was unaware of foul play and everyone was happier all around. Mm. Except for the mage. I suppose, but she was dead. She didn't need to be happy. It was after that when I learned that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. Wise lesson to learn. And one that not everyone learns, I'm sad to say. But that's enough tale spinning from me for the moment. Uh, talking about the mage has made me a bit nostalgic, I'm afraid. Ah, the good old days. What say you? By all means. More adventures. Again? Well now, what might interest you, I wonder? Shall I describe the stages involved with Lanthrax poisoning? I watched a man go through all seven once. Mm, the few like, certainly. <laughs> no, I'll not inflict that upon you just yet. Let's see, how about the largest battle I ever took part in? That would have been the slaughter of Prince Azrin. Did you hear of that down in these parts? Uh, you killed a prince. Me? Not personally, but I did take part in the attack. Prince Azrin was fourth in line to the throne, you see. He started off as eleventh, but worked his way up the old-fashioned method by inheriting control of an entire Crocell from his grandfather. After assassinating his way through the royal family, the king hired three other cells to take down Prince Azrin once and for all. I was in one of those cells. Mm, is this sort of thing common in Antiva? Antivan royalty is very much bound up in the crows. You wouldn't want it run by a bunch of commoners, after all, would you? And this means they get involved in politics quite often. This particular fight nearly bankrupted the nation, I understand. It almost ended up putting a crow on the throne, a commoner. But that's a whole different story. I played a very small part. So, what did you do? My part in the entire battle was taken up trying to reach Princess Verina, who had thrown in with her brother. I killed about 11 of her guards personally before I got knocked out of a window. I landed in a river and nearly drowned. I was fished out by some urchins who robbed me blind. Made off with my boots, too. At least they didn't cut my throat. And that was my part in history. You got robbed by urchins. Mm. I had to find my way back to the safe house, bruised and naked, and thankful to be alive. But there you go. Tale told. Let's be off before I tell more embarrassing stories, huh? What say you? By all means. More stories? Well, the only one that's really worth telling is the story of the mission right before I came to Ferelden. But, no, I... 
I would rather not. I, I shouldn't have said anything. Why not? What's the problem? Nothing that I would prefer to speak of. Perhaps another day, I'm sorry. What say you? Uh, discuss something personal. Oh, this should be good. What would you like to discuss? Uh, never mind. What's the influence with Zerv run? 56. Uh, we probably need a bit higher approval before he talks about anything new. We could drop some gifts on him, I suppose. Sin has a pretty good approval. But Zevron... It's not bad, but... He's the most... One whose loyalty is the most in question. Uh, I think Sin will... At least follow us loyally until the end of the day. He's not the sort of uh, person to have any. His loyalties are carried openly. Might not ex act exactly what how we would like to, but he's. I I don't fear any subterfuge from him. Definitely need to change our weaponry. Not Crusher we have is not terrible, but just doesn't really do all that much damage either anymore. Melee critical chance plus five percent plus one damage. Yeah. War axe does, uh, does uh, quite a bit more damage. Armor penetration isn't all that, but 4.5% critical chance, then plus 5% critical chance. So that's 1 in 10 hit should be an automatic critical. And the natural damage is quite a bit higher too. Damage is now 46.6. Uh, what is it now? It's main hand damage. Okay, I don't think the the main ha the damage is independent of any weapon. But that will mean the actual damage of the weapon is not all that important because even at best it's like twenty five percent of their full damage. Hard to say, hard to say. Anyway, I, I think we're done with the chatting. Oh, we still have a, quite a few... Oh, too, too many items, too many items. So, but first things first, we need to do some leveling up. You need strength. You don't need a lot of it, but you do need it. For the equipment. Uh, we need to choose a specialization. Maybe champion would be great for Alistair too. The problem is I'm already a champion, so maybe Berserk would be better. We're not gonna get a Reaver. Even if we don't take the talents, that's still plus 2 strength plus 10 health, so I'm taking Berserker. And skills. Uh, so I can't take any of these, I don't have the cunning. Take trap making then. Oh, 
overpower or death blow. Restore a portion of warrior stamina with each kill. I mm. uh, I'd rather take the shield abilities, the overpower. Liliana. Now I'll have to try to unlock Duelist. I think I know where to unlock that. No, I'm saving the points because uh, I don't really know what Duelist will offer. Win. Uh, arcane warrior, but we can't get blood mage. We don't want shapeshifter. So our arcane warrior is pretty much the only thing worth taking. Uh, I think that's in Brazilian forest. So that's really not an option for us. Uh, not for some time. Morgan. Do you need any more magic? We're sort of... well, we could get Spirit Healer, I suppose. Win... would Win be willing to teach someone? It, it wouldn't be a bad thing for Morgan. Shapeshifter is are utterly useless. Could go for Master Shapeshifter, but I don't think so. We could get the Blizzard now. Could also get Curse of Mortality. Death Cloud, Paralyze. Curse of Mortality is incredibly annoying. We haven't encountered a lot of healers yet, but if we encounter Curse of Mortality would be amazingly useful. Hmm. Mm, I'm not quite sure what to take take her take with her. I might as well take Blizzard since we've taken so many frost spells already. Mm, not do we save the other point? And a crash.